Welcome to the Sports World 1869, a world so large you're a part of it whether you know it or not. Crazy as it sounds, another month of baseball has just ended, which is insane, and we are going to talk about it in the second edition of the Month of Review. So let's get this started. What a crazy month we had. I mean, Beltre hit 400 home runs. Miguel hit 400 home runs. A-Rod passed Willie Mays on the on the home run list. I think he also passed Bay, uh, not Babe Ruth. I think he also passed Barry Bonds and RBIs. So some milestones were reached. There were so many massive home runs this month. I'm going to cover it later in the awards. But it was crazy how Braun hit that 475. And, and Adrian Gonzalez smacked the scoreboard. And of course, Stan hit the ball out of Dodger Stadium. And the belts three decker and it just it was crazy Bryce Harper really just turned it up a notch in this month having that period where he hit three home runs I mean he hit five home runs in two days insanity like that and the twins coming out of nowhere which they're kind of the story of this month they are now in first place believe it or not they are in first place despite starting 1-6, and six, and they've been completely dominating. And some teams have taken serious falls, including the Tigers, the Red Sox. Although, to be fair with the Red Sox, they weren't really great. But lately, they've been really bad. And teams like the Rays just keep winning despite losing every guy to the injury every single day. Which makes no sense, but that's what's happening regardless. Much like last month. A few players, unfortunately, got hurt this month. And we're going to pay a little tribute to those players who got hurt. Let's continue our discussion of the month with the awards of the month. Yes, here we go. First, we have the best starter in the month of May for the American League. The nominees are Corey Kluber, Dallas Keuchel, Felix Hernandez, and Chris Archer. And I'm giving it to Dallas Keuchel. And the reason why is, first off, he threw a shutout in his last start against the White Sox. His ERA is still below 2. He is still dominant. He's still very consistent. And those are very important factors that he showed in this month as well as last month. And I think it's just a continuation of excellence. Corey Kluber, to not completely dismiss him, he would probably be the runner-up because he had a fantastic month as well. You may remember the 18th strikeout game he had. Then he struck out 12 guys, then 7, then 11. So he kept going on this high strikeout ratio and it's incredible how good he became all of a sudden because I'm telling you in the last month of April he was a, a bean bag. People were beating him like a drum. But this month he really changed it around. Felix Hernandez has the most wins, which is why I put him on here. And Archer strikes out people left and right, despite the fact that he's not on the most competitive team, or I should say the best team. He still is doing the best he can and striking out lots of guys. But Dallas Keicho is getting it because he definitely is the best pitcher of the month. If Kluber had just been pitching more consistently, I probably would have given it to him. But Keicho is the man. Once again, by the way, the best starter in the month of May for the National League. The nominees are Max Scherzer, Garrett Cole, Shelby Miller, James Shields, and Michael Waka. And I'm giving it to Max Scherzer. The reason why is because he is consistently winning. His whole team isn't that great in terms of the pitching staff. He's really the only consistent guy you have to go out there and dominate, and he dominates. I've watched so many games with him, especially the recent one against the Cubs, where he struck out 13 guys in seven innings, and he just keeps his team in the game. I know his win-loss totals aren't the greatest, but that's the team's fault, not his. Garrett Cole and Shelly Miller are having great starts to their season, and this month is no exception to that. Although Miller, I'd say a little better than, than Garrett Cole. In fact, I probably would have put Shelly Miller on here, but I just think Scherzer's a little bit better. But Shelby, I think, has a lower ERA, and he threw a almost a no-hitter. It was a one-hitter, and he threw a shutout. I think the second shutout of the month. 
He's been fantastic for Braves. A team kind of like the Rays where they have no business being good, but they are anyways, and this is one of the reasons why. I put Waka on there because he has seven wins, and for the Cardinals, the fact they keep winning without Wainwright is because of guys like Waka who step up to be the next uh, big pitcher. Although you got Miller as well, who was a former Cardinal, so it's kind of ironic that former Cardinals, or I should say Cardinal pitching prospects, are top guys right now in baseball. Just goes to show who does produce the best players in baseball. Worst starters of the week for the American League in the month of May. The nominees are R.A. Dickey, C.C. Sabathia, Joe Kelly, and Chris Tillman. And before I even go over who actually won it, you'll notice something strange about these pitchers. They're all in the American League East. And everyone in the American League East stinks. And now you know why. And the winner goes to R.A. Dickey. Why R.A. Dickey? Because he's terrible. That's all. Joe Kelly is better, I think. Chris Tillman could be better one day. CC has shown to be better. R.A. Dickey is a one-hit wonder who did nothing good this whole month except for the fact he threw a complete game after giving up four runs. Gee, thanks, Dickey. Maybe we don't have to score so many runs every time you come out there. It, he's the kind of pitcher, Dickey, that you have to score a lot of runs for because he doesn't know what he's doing out there. He can't throw a two-seam, he can't throw a fastball, he can only throw a knuckleball, and sometimes he can't even do that right. I'm hoping the Blue Jays trade him or he just leaves baseball because it's getting very annoying. I bet you they discount the tickets for R.A. Dickey because that's how much he stinks. So there you go. Worst pitcher in the month of May for the National League. The nominees are Gio Gonzalez, Jason Marquis, Steven Strauss and Kyle Loesch. And the guy I'm going to pick is not really the worst, but the guy I hate the most is Jason Marquis. Although, to be fair, he's the only guy of these four pitchers, I think I said four or five, who's actually in the bullpen now. So that's how bad he is. Marquis goes out there and he gives away the game. I can't tell you how many times the Reds had a lead until this idiot came in there and ruined it. He's absolutely the worst starter of this month. And though Strasburg and Gio are having bad starts, I know they can be better. With Marquis, no, it's not happening. He never really was that great, and he's not good now. I don't know what the Reds were expecting when they picked him up, but I don't think they should have had high expectations because he's been terrible lately and definitely worthy, in a bad way, for the worst pitcher of the month. The next category we have is... The best pitcher in the month of May for the American League. The nominees are Glenn Perkins, Hudson Street, Andrew Miller, and Bob Boxberger. And I'm giving it to Andrew Miller. He's got 15 saves out of 15 attempts. .86 ERA. He is absolutely dominant. Probably the best closer right now in baseball. Arguably, of course. And he's just been fantastic for the Yankees. Someone who people didn't expect to be a closer. Because if you remember, this is his first time doing it as a full-time job. And he has been very good at it. Glenn Perkins is on here because he leads the league with 19 saves. Which is great. But his ERA is not as good as Andrew Miller. He also has blown some saves as well. Plus, the Twins are winning so many grind games. So he's going to be up there anyway. He's going to get more opportunities than the Yankees who kind of stink. So Andrew Miller is a little better than that. Hudson Street is great too, by the way. Don't underestimate that guy. He also got an extension earlier in this month. So something to point out. But he's also a fantastic closer as well. But I think Andrew Miller is definitely the best closer in the month of May in the American League. Now it is time for the award for the best closer in the month of May in the National League. The nominees are Trevor Rosenthal, Drew Storen, Santiago Casilla, Familia, and the winner is Drew Storen. I'm giving it to Drew because the Nationals have been winning. The Nationals were arguably the hottest team this month, despite how they finished it, but we'll get to that a little later. But they were the best team this month, and when you got your closer throwing strikes like he does, it's an easy decision. But don't dis... But don't dismiss Trevor Rosenthal, Castilla, or Familia. Their teams are dominating, and that's probably the reason why. It's not the primary, but having a good closer helps so much. So when you see Trevor, Familia, and Castillo dominating, that team probably is as well. 
which is why they're on here as well. But I just feel like Drew Storen is helping this national team recover from their really bad start last month to the dominating one they have this month. Now it's time to give out the worst closer in the month of May in the American League. The nominees are Cody Allen, Fernando Rodney, and David Robertson. And I'm giving it to David Robertson because he blew three saves this month. Three. Which is really bad against the Reds and against the Blue Jays twice. The rest of these guys, Allen and Rodney, they have higher rays. But, but David Robertson has just been absolutely terrible for the Chicago White Sox. And they paid him a lot of money, so he better figure things out or get lost because... You can't do that when your team expects you to win, especially when you were brought in to fix the bullpen problems, not make them worse. But that's the reality of the situation. I hope in the next month, David Robertson will figure it out and stop giving away the game. Of course, as long as Josh Donaldson isn't playing against him every single day, I think he'll be all right. The worst closer of the month in May in the National League. The nominees are Craig Kimbrell, Steve Ciszek, Hector Rodon. I'm giving it to Steve Ciszek because he lost his job as a closer. The, these other two guys, they're still closers of their team. But Ciszek is so bad, he is no longer the closer on his team. Another guy I could put on here is Addison Reed. He's also so terrible, he is no longer the closer on the Arizona Diamondbacks. But I'm giving it to C-Shack because his impact has been a lot worse. Because the Marlins had a lot of expectations to be a good team this year. No one thought the Diamondbacks were going to go anywhere. I disagree with that. But that's not relevant. What is, is the fact that the Marlins were supposed to be a really good team. And because C-Shack has been blowing so many games, they had, to move, they had to move him out of the closing position and to more of a setup slash long relief because that's how bad he is. And that really hurts your team when your closer can not only not get any saves, but it's so bad, you got to get him out of there. And that's why Ciszek is the worst closer in the month of May in the National League. Best hitter in the month of May in the American League, the nominees are Prince Fielder, Nelson Cruz, Josh Don Miguel Cabrera, Mark Teixeira, and Jose Altuve. And I'm giving it to Prince Fielder. Because the Rangers are now above 500 as a team. And this is one of the reasons why. They started the season so bad. Heck, this month so bad. And Fielder has been getting this team to the next level because of the high batting average. By the way, he leads the league in batting average. His many home runs, his RBIs, he's been doing everything for this team. And that is why he is the best hitter in the month of May in the American League. Josh Donaldson was somebody that I wanted to put on here as well. But the reason why I didn't is because his team is not winning. He, on the other hand, he, on the other hand, is doing pretty much that. He's leading the league in runs. He gets all the clutch home runs. That's something very important to know about Josh Donaldson. He is an insane clutch hitter. He hit, he hit a walk-off home run against David Robertson, which is why I mentioned before, as long as he's not with Robertson, Robertson should be fine. But he's hitting so many key home runs and scoring the key runs for this team. The Blue Jays are really bad right now. Imagine how much worse they would be without Josh Donaldson, which is why he is definitely a runner-up to Prince Fielder and someone that I was thinking of putting him on there, but I just wish the team was doing better like the Rangers are, which is why Fielder gets and Cruz is great, but he's not on that level this month. This month, he kind of didn't do as well as he did last one. To be honest, though, the way, he had a, the way his last month went, how could you expect him to keep following up like that? You can't. So... It's all right. Now for the best hitter in the month of May in the National League. The nominees are Bryce Harper, Paul Goldschmidt, Matt Holiday, and the Todd father, Todd Frazier. And the winner is, this is to be expected. He leads the league in OPS. I think walks, home runs, RBIs. He is the best hitter in the month of May and the best hitter in baseball right now. The other three guys are great, but nothing in Bryce Harper's area although the Todd father does have 16 home runs so that's really impressive and Matt Holiday broke a cardinal record of reaching on base 43 consecutive times to start a season so that's very impressive Paul Goldschmidt is leading in almost every category and if he's not leading in it he's number two in it home runs 
RBIs, on-base percentage, batting average. In fact, his batting average is better than Bryce Harper's, which is why even though he's not leading in every single category, I thought Paul Goldschmidt might be slightly better than Harper because the average is higher and the OPS is just under him. I mean, Go Paul Goldschmidt is one of those guys who no one seems to talk about even though he's been doing everything for his team and he's been so consistent and he's still my pick for the MVP this year despite the fact that everyone else is probably thinking Bryce Harper, but I think Paul Goldschmidt still has a chance to be that good. Worst hitter in the month of May in the American League. The nominees are Steven Drew, Pablo Sandoval, Alexei Ramirez, Luis Valbuena. I'm giving it to Pablo Sandoval because not only is he the worst hitter, but he's also one of the biggest disappointments to his team. They got him for the offense, not so much the defense, and if he's not hitting, he's a waste of money. And therefore, he is definitely the worst hitter in the American League. The worst hitter for the month of May in the National League. The nominees are Matt, Ka Jimmy, Rollins, Billy Hamilton, and Giancarlo Stanton. That's right, I said it. The man with more money than certain GDPs of countries is the worst hitter, or could be one of the worst hitters in May. Although I'm giving it to... Billy Hamilton because Hamilton may be stealing bases but he's not getting on base too often he's getting a lot of key strikeouts against him I should say and he's not really doing that much for the Reds he's now in the bottom of the order he used to be leadoff man now he's number eight that's how bad you are when you go from one to eight in your lineup you really stink especially in the National League when that's not good so he's really bad Stanton has a low batting average he leads the league in strikeouts, or he's close up there. He rarely walks. The only thing Stanton is doing up there is hitting home runs. That's it. And they're impressive. I'll give the man credit. He hits them really nicely. But he's not doing much else. His on-base percentage is terrible. His average is terrible. The strikeouts need to go down. So he's definitely one of the worst batters. Or I'd say he's one of the worst hitters in this month. Billy Hamilton is definitely the worst hitter of the month. And Matt Kemp. And Chase Ali and, you know, Jay Bruce. Those guys are at least improving. But Stan really had a bad month in terms of just being on base. He hit a lot of home runs, though. But if your team is losing as bad as the Marlins are, it really doesn't help at the end of the day. Best defensive player in the month of May in the American League. The nominees are Jose Altuve, Adrian Beltre, Alexei Ramirez, Mike Trout, and Kevin Pillar. I'm giving it to Kevin Pillar because that guy is a fantastic fielder. He gets to all the balls. He makes fantastic throws, cutoff throws, catches, leaps. He is a fantastic fielder and really underrated because his offense has been terrible lately. But in terms of his actual fielding ability, it's second to none. It's fantastic. Mike Trout's great too. Altuve's doing really well on single double plays. Jake Marisnik is another guy I didn't mention, but he's fantastic as well. And Beltre is a gold glove, a, a gold glove kind of candidate, anyways, as is people like Josh Donaldson and of course the guy that I'll mention in the National League, which is gonna be very obvious who won that one, but we'll get to that in just a second. Here, here we go. The best defensive player in the month of May for the National League. And the winner is Nolan Arenado. The other guys I thought about were Charlie Blackman, D. Gordon, and Alterdin Simmons. I think I said that right. But if you look at Nolan Arenado, he has the most put outs, assists. He's just a fantastic player. He's a highlight reel. He makes all the best defensive plays you may ever see in baseball. Simmons is great too, but Nolan Arenado is the best defensive player in baseball, period. I don't think anyone disputes this. I hope no one disputes this. And if you ever have doubts, just go watch him play. And he'll make a believer out of you, as he has for me. Worst defensive player in the American League, and the winner is Marcus Simeon. He's got 18 errors. No one's even close to that. He's a shortstop who should be second base, or maybe just stop fielding altogether. He's done a few good turnabouts with the double plays, but 18 errors? Ooh, that's that's not good. So he's definitely the worst defensive player in the month of May for the American League. The worst defensive player in the National League for the month of May is Ian Desmond, for basically the same reason as Marcus Simeon. Too many errors, he's got to cut down on that. One of my favorite words I like to give out each month, as well as the week, is the best home run. And this month was so hard, so hard to come up with the one that I thought was the best. You had Aegon, he hit the scoreboard at Brewer Park. 
you had Harper's three home run day. You had Ryan Braun who hit the who hit the farthest home run in the stadium history. You have Brandon Bell to hit a home run to the third deck in Coors Field. You have the one that Stan hit out of Dodger Stadium, and the one he hit in Mets Life, not Met Life. The one he hit in City Field. I was thinking of Shea Stadium, but that's gone. He hit the one in, in City Field. That's one of the longest ever. Maybe he hit another long one in his own stadium. He had so many rockets, so it was really, really hard for me to pick what was the best home run, and I'm going to go with Giancarlo Stan out of the stadium. Not only is that the fourth time that's happened, in all the history of Dodger Stadium, that is the fourth time that's ever happened, but it was very impressive. It's one thing to hit a ball miles high in a stadium. It's another thing to hit the ball out of the stadium. That's something you don't see often. And it was very impressive, especially in Dodger Stadium, a place where the ball dies in the outfield. He just absolutely hammered it. And that is why that was definitely the best home run of the month. The second one, though, I liked the most after that one would have to be Brandon Belt's home run in the third deck of Coors Stadium. That was amazing. As they say, that was Bond's territory. And that man took steroids. You know Belt's pretty strong. All right, now we're going to give out... The awards for each team in the month of May. First, we have the Super Sluggers. This is the team that hit the most home runs. Now, I didn't write down how many home runs the team hit in the month of May. But whoever has the most of each of these categories besides home runs is going to win the award for this month. So it's an accumulation of both last month and this month. Whoever has the most so far is winning it, in case you're wondering. Now... The winners of the Super Sluggers are the Houston Astros. They have 68 home runs, which is impressive to say the least. They're a home run or nothing kind of team, so you should expect them to have the most anyways. The next award is the Gold Gloves. This goes to the best fielding team in all of baseball. The Miami Marlins have a fielding percentage of 990, and that's the highest, so they are definitely the best fielding team in baseball and have won the gold gloves. Next we have the pitching aces. This is the team with the lowest ERA in the entire pitching staff. And the St. Louis Cardinals with 2.73 ERA definitely win it. And they won it last month as well. They are just the best pitching staff in baseball, bullpen, and starting rotation. You got it all, and this team does. And therefore, they are the best pitching staff in baseball and are, not the, and are the pitching aces. B Demons. This goes to the team with the most stolen bases. The winner is the Cincinnati Reds. They have 49 stolen bases so far this year and are leading the league after this month in that category. And therefore, they are the Speed Demon. Next, I have the On Base Machines. This is the team that leads the league at On Base. And the Tigers, with an On Base percentage of 338, is the On Base Machine. The Running Man Award goes to the team that has scored the most runs. And that team is the Blue Jays with 268. Thank you, Josh Donalds. The Dominance Award goes to the best team so far after two months of baseball. And the winners are from each league would have to be the St. Louis Cardinals in the National League and the Houston Astros of the American League. If you wanted to pick for just this month, you could argue the Giants and the Twins. The Giants are, the Giants are currently 21-9 in the month of May, and the Twins are 20-7, and seven, so they were really down it. But the Cardinals, as I mentioned in my last one, by last one I mean the month of review, they started the last, they ended last month on a winning streak, and so did the Astros, and they both were so dominant. In this month, I had to make them the best teams of the month. But those two teams, the Giants and Twins, were really good too, and very good runner-up, which is why the surprise team of the month is the Minnesota Twins. They went from hero, I mean, they went from zero to hero. They now lead the American League Central in wins, and they are on top. We'll see how long that lasts, but as of right now, they are seriously a team to be reckoned with, which makes me really surprised, but that's baseball for you. It always is. Worst team in the month of May. The nominees are the Rockies, the Reds, the Miami Marlins, the Red Sox, the Brewers. I'm giving it to the Miami Marlins. I didn't originally, but they're really bad. I mean really bad. So bad that they're 
manager was fired. And even though he was fired, the team continues to play badly. As if firing and rehiring managers fixes things in the first place, which it doesn't. But regardless, they did that. Stan is their team leader, and he's doing nothing. Latos got hurt. I think Kozart's hurt. Henderson Alvarez is hurt. They're playing terrible baseball, and they're not going anywhere this year if they keep playing this badly. They're probably not going anywhere anyways because the Nationals and the Mets are so much better. Put the Rockies and the Reds here because the Rockies had an 11-game losing streak and the Reds had a 9-game losing streak. And even the Rays had a 6-game losing streak. But at least they've rebounded. I mean, the Reds went to sweep the Nationals. The Rockies are on a 4-game winning streak. At least they're rebounding as teams. The Marlins aren't rebounding at all. They're just, every time I watch it, they're losing to some random team. They're just absolutely terrible. I mean, the most disappointing team this month would have to be the Padres just because of all the hype. But if you want to talk about, the, if you want to talk about what absolutely sucks in the month of May, it have to be the Marlins, then maybe the Rockies, and then the Reds. But at least, like I said, those teams actually improve. Miami, not so much. So that concludes the second edition of the month of review. And it was a lot to go over. So I appreciate anybody who actually stuck around to watch the whole video. Or at least parts of it. Anyhow, I am looking forward to the next month of baseball. Because this one was a complete shocker. With the Twins being great. And teams like the Padres absolutely stinking. I mean, that's not how I saw this year drawing out and that's the way it's going and that's it, it's really surprising to be perfectly honest and I'm just excited to see what happens next will Harper hit 50 home runs this year maybe maybe Todd Frazier will as well who knows but the only way you'll know for sure is to stick tuned for the next week of review as well as the next month of review don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below and share your thoughts not just with me but of course the entire world of sports please throw some heat at the like button Thanks for watching and have a great day.